Food allergies are a pretty common thing. We're all familiar with them. I, for example, am allergic to egg whites. Not to whole eggs, but to egg whites. In fact, when I eat them, I get to be generally, and we'll say unpleasant to be around, we'll say. I get an upset stomach, I get gassy, it's not a fun time. I was forced to eat them when I was a kid, and as soon as I hit adulthood, I stopped eating eggs entirely. It took going carnivore and trying to fix the egg allergy that taught me that I was actually allergic to just the whites, not to the full egg. I can still eat egg yolks, but I don't particularly care for them due to a sort of a lifetime association of discomfort with them. But there are several of these food allergies out there. We're familiar with peanut allergies and shellfish allergies and other kinds like that. But there are five here that can complicate your keto or carnivore diet, and really four. And I just threw a fifth one in there. That's not really keto or carnivore, just because it's interesting. So I've got five unusual food allergies for you today. And the first one of these is the one that if you get it, your, your life on the carnivore or keto diet is going to become very complicated. And that is an allergy to red meat. Usually, beef is what we associate it with in the United States because most Americans since World War II don't eat a lot of lamb. But it's an allergy to red meat in general. And it comes from, it's called alpha-gal syndrome or AGS. Also called alpha-gal allergy, red meat allergy, or tick bite meat allergy. A few months ago, I did a video on the Lone Star Tick, and some people were surprised about this, had never heard about this before. It is a serious, potentially life-threatening allergic reaction. It can be for many people who go through it. AGS is not caused by an infection. Its symptoms occur after people eat red meat, though this is very rare, very, very, very rare for them who just eat it, who get this allergy suddenly from eating red meat. Are, or are exposed to other products containing alpha-gal. Alpha-gal is a sort of odd sugar molecule in the meat. The allergy can manifest as hives, anodema, the swelling of skin and tissue, angioedema, sorry, uh, gastrointestinal upset, diarrhea, stuffy or runny nose, sneezing, headaches, a drop in blood pressure, and in certain individuals, anaphylaxis, which is why it is life-threatening. Most people who get this are going to get it because they got bit by the... Uh, Lone Star Tick, which carries the sugar or protein molecule that causes the problem. And then you get it in your bloodstream, and now you are allergic to red meat for the next several years. It's a temporary allergy. The one you may not have heard of, I've only ever encountered one person in my life with this next one, is an, al an allerg allergic reaction to poultry. Yes, chicken. Poultry meat allergy is rare in humans, caused by consumption of poultry usually chicken or turkey, because in the United States, in the West, that's what we usually eat. Although, yeah, I suppose you could get from eating duck as well. If this happens to you, the body triggers an immune reaction and becomes overloaded with immunoglobulin E antibodies. It can occur with egg allergy, but more often occurs with allergy or without allergy to poultry eggs. So, for instance, I can't eat eggs, but I can eat chicken. What triggers it? We really don't know. <laughs> but less than 1% of people in the world have this problem. Now, the symptoms for this allergy are fun. Uh, your tachycardia or hives, redness, and chicken allergy rash, which sounds vague, but if you get a weird rash and you get hives and from eating chicken, this might be you. Gastrointestinal symptoms for this also include nausea, vomiting, and stomach cramps. You can get a runny or stuffy nose, a mild fever, wheezing, and difficulty breathing, and again, in rare cases, anaphylaxis. A lot of the, you may going to notice a lot of these allergic reactions have the same symptoms, which probably aren't going to help you if you are suddenly getting sick after having done carnivore for a while, because you can also develop some of these over time. As we will discover here with the next one, bell pepper allergy, very rare food allergy. But I've known several people who have this, including my wife. My wife is allergic to bell peppers and intolerant to onions. You have to cook the heck out of some onion, a small amount of it, for her to be able to really eat it safely. But she can't have bell peppers, jalapenos, habaneros, any of those kind of peppers. She can have table pepper, just fine. But she cannot have, like, the fruit peppers. Again, bell peppers and the like. I date before her, several years before we met, I dated a woman who also had this allergy. And before that person, one of my best friends in high school, she had this allergy. In fact, everybody I've ever known has who've had this allergy have been women. This, that might just be anecdotal though. Let me know in the comments if you have this allergy or if you know someone who does and if it's a man or a woman. Allergy to bell pepper is commonly reported with respiratory symptoms rather than reactions of the mouth or skin. Uh, this is going to be like asthma or rhinoconjunctivitis, and it's generally unusual. It's 14 in 10,000 people. 
Meaning in my town where I, that I live, which should ha has around 30,000 people in it, there should be about 50 people in my town with this allergy, but the only one I've ever met is my wife. <laughs> and the next one for all of you keto people who love to eat your keto processed foods and say, yeah, yeah, Anthony, I, tell I hear you. I'm with you on processed foods but being bad, but I need my occasional keto treats. This one's for you. Food dye allergy. One in 500 adults is apparently allergic to food dyes. Most commonly, carmine tartrazine, anato, and saffron. The symptoms for this are hives, so this version called urticaria, and itchy skin. This also includes flushing, severe headache, facial swelling, tightness in the chest, and of course, difficulty breathing. Fun times. Food dye allergy. Possibly the easiest of these to avoid simply because we only eat food dyes if you're eating processed foods. Or you make a, maybe you made a cake from scratch, but you wanted to make your frosting and you wanted a certain color, so you made so you bought some commercial food dye. Easy enough to avoid that one compared to the others. And the last one of these we're going to talk about, definitely not carnivore or keto, but this one is just weird. And I've met exactly one person in my life who had this, and it was my own mother, who at least for a time developed a banana allergy. Yes, allergy to bananas. This is less than 1% of adults. It can develop over time. This involves itching and skin swelling of the mouth and throat, but can occasionally be serious. I think with my own mother, it was itching and skin swelling of the mouth and throat area. She had to stop eating them because she had difficulty breathing from her throat constricting. But those are five unusual food allergies. And so I'm curious, are you allergic to any of these? I'd be surprised if you're watching this channel and it was beef allergy because this is a carnivore and keto channel, unless you just discovered me. And if you did, welcome. But I'm curious, have you met anybody with a poultry allergy? I only met one person my whole life allergic to chicken, and it was... Made me very sad for them. <laughs> but I've dated or been friends with several people who, and I'm married to one now, to a woman who is allergic to bell pepper. But I've known three people in my life with that, aller al that allergic problem. Maybe more if I think about it hard. I've never met a food dye allergy person, and I know someone who's allergic to bananas. But beyond that, what other rare food allergies can you think of? And are you allergic to any of these? So let me know in the comments, please. And how you think some of this could complicate a carnivore diet, the beef allergy one being the most obvious. And uh, like and subscribe if you haven't. It does help, as does sharing this on social media. That helps a lot, too. I'm Anthony Stein, the Practical Carnivore, and thanks for tuning in today.